Hello and welcome back. Today we are going to talk EV charging adapters. Everything you need to know about EV charging adapters. As you can see, I have 10 different adapters here on the table in front of me. We're gonna go over each and every one, explain what they do, how you use them, and help you decide if you need an EV adapter or not, and if you do, which one will suit your needs best. But first, please don't forget, click that subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you don't miss any upcoming content here on State of Charge. So before we begin, I wanna say that this video is really specific for the North American market. That's because in different areas of the world, different connectors are used for electric vehicles. So the content would be different. Now, there's some overlap in some markets, but for the most part, what we're talking about here today is for North America. These are the adapters, these are the connectors we use in North America. Okay, so why do we even need adapters? Why can't we just pull up to a charging station and just plug your car in, and not have to worry about what connector you use? I wish that was the case, but it's not. Unfortunately, there are different connectors that are used today. Hopefully at one point, somewhere down the road, we'll have some sort of a, you know, kumbaya moment and all the manufacturers will get together and use the same plug. But that's not what's happening today. So what we really are gonna focus in on today for the most part is Tesla connectors compared to what everybody else uses and the adapters that you need to use because Tesla, has the most electric vehicles on the road by far in North America. It's not even close. Tesla has something like 65 or 70% of the market share. Now that's starting to even out a little bit more, but they still dominate. And Tesla uses their own connector. Everybody else uses the same connector for level one and level two charging. That's 120 volt and 240 volt charging. Now there are a different connect, there are two different connectors for DC fast charging, which is higher speed charging, but we're gonna get into that in a second. What I first want to just establish is that Tesla uses their proprietary connector. That looks like this. This connector gets used for all types of Tesla charging. Level one, which is regular 120 volt outlet. Level two, which is 240 volt charging. You can get an outlet like this here. It's a larger commercial type of an outlet. You might use that for a home electric range or an electric clothes dryer, uh, and it delivers more power, 240 volts compared to 120 volts for a regular household outlet. And they also use it for their superchargers, which are DC fast charging stations that charge at 400 volts. So. The one good thing about Tesla, even though they kind of went against the industry, created their own plug and it's proprietary, it's a very elegant solution and it, it does all the different charging that Tesla vehicles have. It's not the same with other electric vehicles. So all other electric vehicles use for level one and level two charging, a, a connector called the J1772, one of these here. Now, all these charging stations have the same connector. It, it, they might look a little differently, but the pins are the same. And it's called the J1772. Some people call it the J plug. And that's for level one and level two charging. It gets a little more complicated when we talk about DC fast charging. That's the super high speed charging, which gets done at between 400 and 1,000 volts. For that, there are two different connectors. One is called the CCS or combo plug. And that looks like this right here. The other one is called Chatamo. Now I don't have a Chatamo plug with me here, but I do have a Chatamo adapter that we're gonna get into in uh, uh, just a few minutes. And basically the way it's working now is CCS has become the standard for North America and Europe. And what's happening is there was only two manufacturers, Nissan and Mitsubishi that had been selling vehicles with Chatamo. Uh, Nissan is now transitioning to CCS. They have a new vehicle coming out called the Araya. It has CCS on it, no longer using Chatamo. They're gonna continue selling this current generation Nissan Leaf with Chatamo, but when they either retire the Leaf or bring out the next generation Leaf, it's going to have CCS. So for the most part, CCS is the dominant standard and it's what we're gonna be using in North America. I just wanted to get that established because we're gonna talk about those different uh, DC fast charging adapters in a few minutes. But I'm gonna start out with the Tesla adapters. Now there's two 
reasons you would want to use an adapter. If you had a Tesla vehicle and you wanted to charge your vehicle from a non-Tesla charging station. So uh, the first type of charging we'll talk about is level one and level two. You have a Tesla vehicle, but you want to use a J1772 charging station. So what happens is Tesla provides you with an adapter. This is called the J1772 to Tesla adapter. And basically it comes with the car. You just plug in the J1772 connector and you plug this into your Tesla vehicle and it works fine. Now, if you lose it or if you need another one, you can either buy it from Tesla or there are third parties that sell them. This one here is made by Electron. I think it's $49.99. This is a pretty good quality J1772 to Tesla adapter. I'd recommend it. Uh, but the one thing you have to make sure is that this adapter should be rated for 60 amps because Teslas can accept up to 48 amps. And you wanna make sure the adapter isn't uh, underpowered. There's some cheap adapters that are coming in from some Asian countries at this moment, and some of them aren't rated for the full 60 amps. Don't buy one of these that are that has a, ra a rating of less than 60 amps. You definitely don't wanna do that. You're gonna have problems. Um, the Electron's a good one, or you could just buy a replacement one right from Tesla if you'd like to. That's the adapter for charging Teslas from a J1772 charging station on level one and level two. Now let's say you have a non-Tesla vehicle, but you wanna use a Tesla wall connector like the one I have here. How do you do that? What you do then is you get a Tesla to J1772 adapter, the other way. We've got a bunch of them here. This has been the most common style. Uh, these have been available for quite a few years now where you um, basically, let me remove this. Well, this is Electron right here and it has a little cover on the back, which I like because it keeps the pins nice and clean and dry when it's not in use. And this locks in here. And one thing I'll note, there's a, a tab on the back that locks. You can't well, you're not supposed to be able to do that. I don't think I had it locked in all the way out. Right, there it is. You can't pull this out. It's locked in. You don't want to be able to pull the connector off of an adapter while it's charging. You want it to lock there. And we're gonna get into those reasons later. Um, but that's really important that if you do get one of these Tesla to J1772 adapters, make sure it locks to the, to, to the, to the connector. Okay, so this is one style. Um, this is another version of that. Looks kind of identical, but this one's made by Tesla Tap. This is also a good quality one. The only thing about it is it doesn't lock to the adapter. So it's one of the, the negatives on the Tesla Tap, but I do like the Tesla Tap because it's a high quality adapter, but um, it doesn't lock to the, the Tesla connector. You see how it slides in? You can just pull it out. So if you're charging in public on a public charging station, somebody could just unplug you hot. That's not good. You don't want this to be able to pull that pull out while it's actively charging. Um, so that's one of the negatives on the Tesla tap. Other, other than that, it really is a high quality uh, piece. Then we have here, this is made by Lectron. I like this unit here. This is kind of a small sleek unit. And if you notice on the bottom, there's a tab. You have to push this in and then it locks in place. And again, it's locked nice. It also has a little hole in the top button here. Uh, and so actually does both the Tesla tap and the Electron uh, uh, adapter here, where you could put a little lock in there. And why would you wanna do that? So, well, this part's locked, but the button's not locked. And if you're charging in public, someone could press the button and unplug you. It doesn't happen often, but we've seen videos of people just walking by electric cars and unplugging them just to be a jerk, I guess. But uh, it does happen. You get one of these little locks that cost like $3. You can buy them online. And uh, then somebody can't press this button and release the connector. So this is another good option here. This one's available by Electron. I've used it quite a bit and I like it. But if that's even too big for you and you want a tiny, at the smallest, uh, Tesla to J1772 adapter you can get. This little guy here is fantastic. It's made by Tesla Tap and it's the Tesla Tap, Tap Mini. And uh, this guy here also has a lock on the bottom. You press the button, lock it in, and then it's locked. It also has the hole on the tab on the top so you can put a little lock in that and nobody can, uh, can, can unlock you. Uh, this is actually my favorite Tesla to J1772 adapter. I love this guy. It's the smallest one. It's the most compact. 
It is the most expensive one, but um, you know, it's high quality. This guy's gonna last you a long time and it's small. You don't have to, you know, you're gonna be carrying this around in your car. Um, it doesn't take up a lot of space. I, lo I, I love this Tesla Tap Mini. Now, um, one last thing I have to talk about all of these uh, Tesla to J1772 adapters. They're all available online at different power levels. Some of them can accept 32 amps, some of them can accept 40 amps, some 48, some 80 amps, and uh, 60 amps I missed in the middle. Um, one thing I wanna urge you is don't buy one that is low powered. Even if your EV can only accept 32 amps, I'm still gonna recommend that you get one that's at least 48 amps. It's made better, it's more robust, the, all of the wires and connections inside are made to handle more amperage, and that's the vehicle you have now that accepts 32 amps. Maybe in two or three years, your next EV is gonna be able to accept 48 amps. And what you do not want to do is charge an electric vehicle that can accept 48 amps, from a Tesla charging station that can deliver 48 amps, and in the middle you have something that can only accept 32 amps. Um, that's bad things happen when you do that. At the, the least of your problems would be that you just melt the unit and it stops working. Could be something much worse. So you don't wanna get in that situation. It costs a few bucks more, but if you are gonna get a Tesla to J1772 adapter, whatever brand you choose, whatever style you choose, I definitely recommend that you get one that is at least 48 amps, even preferably a 60 amp one, but the 48 amp ones are built well and they're robust. I think that'll be fine. Uh, this Tesla Tap Mini is 60 amps. This is my favorite one. I love this guy. Yes, it, it, it costs more money than the rest of them, but it's small, it's compact, it's built really well. It can handle high power and you buy this thing and you never have to worry about it again. It's gonna last you 10 years. You're gonna be able to charge any EV you want on it and not have to worry about lowering the power of the car because some EVs allow you to lower the power draw if you're in a charging station or have a connector that can't accept that much power, but that's a hassle going in and setting the settings. And then you forget you lowered it. And when you go home, the car's charging slower than normal. So if you are buying one of these adapters, please get a good quality one and get one that can accept at least 48 amps. All right, so now we covered adapters for level one and level two charging. Now we're gonna go into DC fast charging. First off, I'm gonna show you this guy here. This is the Chatamo to Tesla adapter. Tesla used to sell these, they don't anymore. Um, I think kind of once CCS began to become the standard and there were a lot of CCS charging stations around, Tesla decided that they, they saw the writing on the wall, Chatamo is gonna be retired in North America, so they stopped selling this car. You could still get them online, but they're super expensive. I've seen them for as much as $1,000. Uh, when Tesla was selling them, I think they were either $450 or $500, but what this allows you to do is charge from a Chatamo DC fast charging station to a Tesla car. So if you own a Tesla, you can charge your Tesla on a Chatamo charging station. This guy has a 50 kilowatt limit. So it's DC fast charging, but it's not that fast. 50 kilowatt isn't that fast. Most Teslas today can accept 250 kilowatt from a V3 Tesla supercharger. So when you think about that, you're getting you know over 200 kilowatt and now you're charging at 50 kilowatts. So it's like one fifth the speed or at least one quarter the speed. And um, you know it, it'll work in a pinch and it'll help you if you're in an area that has Chatamo DC fast chargers and you don't have Tesla superchargers. So these guys do work, but they're not available anymore. You have to get them online from third party resellers and they're quite expensive. What I would probably recommend if, you're, if you do own a Tesla, and you think you want to use DC fast chargers outside of the Tesla supercharger network. Because if you have a Tesla and you go to a Tesla supercharger, you don't need any kind of adapter. You just plug right in and it works just fine. This is for other DC fast charging stations, either Chatham or CCS. So let's talk about CCS. Until recently, Tesla didn't have an adapter available for sale. This Chatamo uh, adapter has been available for many, many years now, but only in the last year or so have there been CCS1 adapters for Tesla vehicles. Now here in North America, we use the CCS1 connector, which is this guy here. In Europe, they use CCS2. It's slightly different. So I just wanna point that out if people are wondering what CCS1, what CCS2. And if you are gonna buy a 
an adapter online, don't buy a CCS2 adapter. It won't work in North America. Well, don't buy one if you live in North America, but if you live in Europe, you want to get a CCS2 adapter. Um, but here in North America, you want to get a CCS1 adapter, and they have not been available until last year. A company called SeaTech, a, a Chinese company, came out with this giant thing. <laughs> I actually was one of the first people to buy one. I think I paid a thousand dollars for this. And I did a video here on State of Charge about it. The video did really well. I think I have over a hundred thousand views at this point. And uh, it worked great. I plugged in. It worked great. Uh, I only was able to pull about um, 80 kilowatt with this because the, that was the maximum that this could deliver. This is a 200 amp uh, uh, adapter. And the Teslas have a 400 volt a battery system, so 200 amps times 400 volts, that's 80 kilowatt that you could deliver. So it maxes out at 80 kilowatt. I don't even think I ever saw 80. I think the most I saw was like 75 or 77, but close to 80. Uh, in any event, so this is made by SeaTech, and they recently, about six months ago, licensed it to Lectron for the North American market. So if you live in North America, you can't buy this from SeaTech anymore as I did. If you want this, you have to buy it through Lectron. And it costs about $650. Now, the downside is it doesn't work. I made my video last year and it worked. When I plugged in the car charge, it worked fine. I used it for four or five times. And then all of a sudden, the fifth time that I went to plug in, it no longer worked. So I got online, I did some research, and I found out Tesla doesn't want you using this on their cars. So they did a firmware update on the cars over the air update that basically blocked you from using it. So what happened was SeaTech then did uh, an update on their software and you could plug into your computer, upload the new um, software, and then it worked. I did it and it worked. But then three or four months later, Tesla put out a new software <laughs> over the air update and then it didn't work again. So I stopped playing the cat and mouse game. That's what's going on with this unit. Tesla does not want you to use it. Um, I actually even talked to EVgo, the EVgo network, and they are banning this from their network. They don't think it's safe. And they are sending out an uh, uh, update to their, to their stations so that somehow the station can identify this is being used, I guess, because it goes through the power electronics in here. I'm not really sure how they can do that, but they're banning this from the network. They really don't even have to because you can't use it now. Tesla keeps pushing out updates that prevent you from using this. So I would definitely not recommend you buy one of these. Okay, so what other... Uh, CCS to Tesla adapters are available. So I found this guy here from a company called EV Hub, and they're based in the Ukraine. And I actually bought this right before Russia invaded the Ukraine and the war started. You can no longer get it because due to the war, um, they're in Kyiv, they're based in Kyiv, really nice guys, I talked to them. They make this in the CCS1 and CCS2 types. Uh, from what I understand, CCS2 works fine. They've had that out for a couple of years now. They just started making the CCS1. And um, so I bought one and uh, it was $525 and it didn't work. And basically I got in touch with the company and now the, the war had just started. So I wasn't gonna give them a hard time about this. I wasn't gonna ask for my money back or anything. They've got enough problems over there. Um, and uh, I, the guy was really nice I spoke to. And he said, look, um, he shipped maybe 30 or 40 of them to the US and he's had 10 people contact him and say they didn't work. But the other 40 people said that they worked just fine. We're trying to figure out exactly why it's not working because it should. And um, uh, we don't know exactly why just yet. So. You can't even order this now, so it's not, uh, you know I would probably recommend you not buying one even if you could because mine doesn't work, but you can't get one now. So um, that's really not even something you should worry about. Um, and the reason why I would recommend you, you know, not getting it is because finally now, you can actually buy the CCS adapter that Tesla makes. Tesla made this available uh, for the South Korean market about a year ago. And um, initially, you couldn't buy it online. I tried as soon as it became available. It rejected my order because I was calling from the because I was trying to put in a U.S. address to deliver it. But that was um, seven or eight months ago. Now, evidently, they have enough of them built up and the manufacturing is ramped up that they are selling them. 
and uh, there are other resellers online that are buying bunches of them and selling them online. You could just do a Google search for this Tesla to CCS1 and you'll see there's a dozen different outlets. They're on eBay, they're on Amazon, they're all over the place. And I found them for as cheap as $309. So not only is it better than these guys, because it works, it's made by Tesla, it's gonna work. It's much less expensive. So if you do want a CCS to Tesla adapter, this is the one to go for. And this guy here can uh, accept up to 400 amps. And 400 amps at 400 volts is about 160 kilowatt. However, it does have the ability to accept more power for a short period of time. And I've, I just saw a video online recently of somebody ex with this adapter and the car was pulling 205 kilowatt, but only for a very short period of time. So um, while it's not quite as fast as say a Tesla V3 supercharger that can charge up to 250 kilowatt, um, this is gonna charge your Tesla really quickly if you can find a high speed DC fast charger that can deliver uh, you know, a 350 kilowatt DC fast charger is basically what you want to find if you want to see how this can max out. I'm going to take my Tesla Model 3 to a 350 kilowatt Electrify America DC fast charger soon and record a full zero to 100% charge session. And then I'm going to compare it to my charge session that I did zero to 100 on a V2 Tesla supercharger and a V3 te Tesla supercharger. So we'll see exactly how this fares compared to charging on Tesla superchargers. And you know, some people say, well, why, why even bother with this? Tesla superchargers are everywhere. Tesla has a great network of superchargers. It's fantastic. It, 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 there's nothing else quite as good as that. Other networks like Electrify America are starting to get there. They're, they're actually proliferating all over the country, but Tesla had such a head start. There's so many of them that it still is the gold standard for high speed electric vehicle charging. However, they're not everywhere. And in some instances, and on some road trips, it's more convenient to stop at a DC fast charger from another network. That's why somebody might want one of these. Now, if you get your EV and you're able to charge at home and you don't do a lot of road trips, you probably don't need one of these adapters. You probably don't even need one of these adapters. But um, people that live driving long road trips, or let's say if you live in an apartment complex, you can't charge your EV at home and you rely on public charging, then it might not be a terrible idea to get one of these. I probably don't recommend getting the Chatamo adapter because that's kind of, um, there's not as many of the Chatamo stations and it only charges at 50 kilowatt and it's really expensive. I'd look at the uh, Tesla, uh, the CCS to Tesla adapter if I wanted to charge on uh, CCS charging stations. And um, as far as if you have a non Tesla electric vehicle, one of these adapters wouldn't be a bad idea if you frequently need to charge on the road because there are Tesla destination chargers, not just the home Tesla wall connectors. Tesla has level two destination chargers scattered all over the country. There's thousands of them at, well, destinations, hotels, amusement parks, golf courses, shopping districts. They have quite a bit of them. You can go to the Tesla website and look up where Tesla destination chargers are. You'll see they're all over the place. And with one of these adapters, you can plug in and charge your electric vehicle. Now those destination chargers are always located on private property. So you wanna make sure you get permission to plug in and charge first. Don't just plug in and walk away. If it's at a hotel or some sort of a uh, place where a restaurant, there are a lot of times at restaurants, always ask management if you can plug in. It's just proper EV charging etiquette. You don't want uh, to get somebody upset. You're, uh, you know, say that you're stealing their electricity. I know if it's in a big public parking lot, then, you know, you're game. Just plug in and, and you're fine. But if you, you can tell situation by situation if you should be asking for permission or not. And if you think you are, I definitely recommend that. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to hop out onto, into my Tesla Model 3. We're gonna take these three CCS adapters. We're gonna see if they work. Now, I've already tried these two and they don't work, so I'm expecting them not to work, but for the video, I'll try them again and I'll show you what happens if they don't work, the messages that I get on the car, and then we're gonna see how this guy works on a 350 kilowatt Electrify America DC fast charger. Now, the last thing I wanna mention if you do have a Tesla vehicle and you wanna use one of these adapters, the vehicle has to be able to use an adapter. And unfortunately, this is new with Tesla. These just became available in the last year or so, and Tesla vehicles that are older than 2020 
can't use the CCS1 adapter. So you need to go into your controls and into software, and then you, I think you check in, uh, additional information. I'll show you in the video exactly how you walk through that. And it says whether the vehicle is CCS1 adapter ready or not, if you can use one of these. Now, somewhere in the middle of 2020 is where Tesla started equipping the cars with the hardware to be able to use these. So uh, if you have a 2020 model year, if it's an early 2020, it probably won't work. If it's a later 2020, it probably will. But if you have a 2021 or 2022 Tesla, these adapters will work. All right, let's hop in my car now. We're gonna take, take these to an Electrify America DC fast charge station, see how they work. If you're thinking about getting a CCS1 to Tesla adapter, you first wanna make sure that your Tesla can use the CCS1 adapters because the older Teslas can't. Tesla started enabling that feature in somewhere around mid 2020. The way you check is you go into the controls of your vehicle, then under software, you'll see additional vehicle information. Click on that, oops, and then right here, it'll say CCS adapter support enabled. It needs to be enabled in order for your Tesla to be able to even use a CCS1 adapter. Okay, so I'm here at a 150 kilowatt Electrify America DC fast charging station, and we're gonna check out the CCS to Tesla adapters first. First up, we're gonna go with the CTEC, which has now been rebranded as Lectron if you buy it in the US. This can deliver a maximum of 80 kilowatt if it works. As I mentioned earlier, what happens is Tesla pushes out a software update to block it from being able to use. Electron or CTEC then push out a, another update that you download. I've downloaded the latest update on this unit now. I'm gonna see if it works. Come on, door locked on me. Okay, so we have to grab the connector. First, plug this clunky thing into the CCS connector, and then you've got to kind of drape this cable this way and plug it in. Now I'm going to initialize the charging session on my phone. This is station two. It says connecting to vehicle. Station two, swipe to charge. Okay and ready to charge inside. Let's see what the car is saying. Ready to charge. Here's connecting to vehicle. We're getting the spinning wheel. And my phone, I just got charge error. We are unable to start your charge. Please check that you are at the correct charger and your vehicle is plugged in. I am at the correct charger, station two. That's the one that I swiped. I'm gonna try it one more time. Number two, swipe to charge. Inside, vehicle still says ready to charge. Initiating charging. The wheel's just spinning. Ready to charge. I'm at 17% state of charge. Charge error again. So uh, as I figured and as I've found before when I've tried to use this adapter, it just doesn't work anymore. Tesla is outsmarting CTEC and Electron and they're pushing out updates to the vehicle that block its use. When I first got it, it worked just fine until Tesla realized, hey, this adapter's out there. We don't want people to use it for whatever reasons. Could be a safety reason. Um, one of the reasons that I think could be is that, and, and this is what people have pointed out, there's no, this adapter isn't locked to the CCS connector. I can just grab this and unpull it hot. That's not good. You don't want that to happen. Now, yes, I do have to press the tab here and that should ch shut the charging station off. But I'd imagine if you push that tab and pull it quickly, you're disconnecting a connection that's transferring 400 volts. And that is not safe. And that's probably the reason why Tesla doesn't want anybody using this adapter. Now let's take a look at the second adapter that I have. This is locked to the vehicle. It did lock. Um, we're gonna try this one next from EV Hub. 
Okay, so next up, we're gonna take a look at the CCS to Tesla adapter made by EV Hub. As I mentioned earlier, again, I have tried this. It hasn't worked for me in the past, but we're gonna do it again now just to give it a shot. This can deliver up to 150 kilowatt. So if it were to be able to uh, work here today, it's gonna be able to send the full amount of power that this Electrify America DC fast charging station can deliver. So let's check it out. Plug it in. Push it onto the car. It does say connecting to vehicle. And now I'm going to swipe my app to initiate a charging session. Station two, swipe to charge. Oh, charge cable not fully secured, it's saying. It's pushed in all the way. And this is what I got the last time I tried. The car doesn't believe that the adapter is secured to the vehicle properly. So uh, charge error, yeah, what's it say inside the car? Let me see. Yeah, it says unable to charge vehicle connection issue. Unable to charge vehicle connection issue. So again, my Tesla, this is a 2021 Tesla Model 3. It does not want to accept the uh, adapter used or made by EV Hub. All right, so now let's try the real deal, the Tesla CCS1 adapter. Okay. Snap it in, open up the charge port, and plug her in. Now, connecting to vehicle, station two, Swipe to charge and spinning wheel. Starting to charge. Okay, we're charging and we are pulling. Wow, it's ramping right up to like 146, 147, 100. We're basically at 150 kilowatts almost immediately. Now, I was at a low state of charge, so I should be pulling 150. I'm not going to do a full charge recording with the CCS adapter just yet. That video is coming up next, and I'm going to compare it to how the Model 3 charged on a V2 and V3 supercharger. We'll see which one takes the longest and just the full charging curve using the adapter. All right, so next up, take a look at this guy. Okay, so finally, we're gonna check out the Chatamo adapter. Again, Tesla used to sell these. They're no longer available. You have to buy them secondhand online. Um, you know, if you really need to do this, if you have only Chatamo charging by your house, that's the only way I'd recommend it because Chatamo really is a dying standard in North America. CCS is really where the whole industry is going, so you'd be much better off buying a CCS to Tesla adapter if you have a Tesla and you wanna use other networks. In fact, Electrify America is phasing out Chatamo connectors throughout the whole country except for in California. California is requiring them to still install one Chatamo plug at every new Electrify America charging station. But typically there'll be four or six CCS stations and the one Chatamo station like we have right here. So let's check it out. Here's the Chatamo connector. As you can tell, different from CCS. Neither one is extraordinarily elegant. <laughs> All right, let's plug this guy in. Oops, car locked again on me. Open the door. This is big and clunky, even worse than CCS. All right, let's hang this thing down. Now, now I'm on station one, so let's plug in station one. and swipe to charge. Blinking blue, initializing. Heard that click, it's still blue. Not yet, taking a little longer than it usually takes with my Chatamo adapter. What's the car say? starting to charge so we are charging but again the chatamo adapter has a maximum power output of 50 kilowatt 
So uh, the CCS1 adapter that we were just using was pulling 150 kilowatt. So you're gonna get three times as much power from the CCS adapter as you would if you used the Chatamo adapter. And that makes a big difference. You could fully charge, say a Model 3 or a Model Y in about an hour if you were dead to 100% to in about an hour on a 150 kilowatt DC fast charger. After an hour of charging with this Chatamo adapter, you'd only be up to around 60%. So it does make a big difference, but again, uh, the Chatamo adapter has been useful for some people, but I think now that we are really transitioning to CCS as the standard here, you'd be better off picking yourself up a CCS1 adapter if you want to use uh, other network charging stations with your Tesla. Okay, so I explained before that the Tesla uses the same connector for all of their charging, level one, level two, and their supercharger stations. I also explained that these adapters allow non-Tesla EVs to charge from Tesla charging stations, but those are wall connectors and Tesla destination chargers. This is a supercharger, Tesla's high-powered, 400 volt high speed charging system. These might look familiar to you, they're all over the country. How about using one of these adapters to charge your non-Tesla EV? Now, as I mentioned earlier, the connectors are the same. Let me put these down. So if you grab the Tesla supercharger connector, you can plug this into it here, and it will plug into your EV. All connected. However, it's not going to work. It will not charge non-Tesla electric vehicles. First of all, these adapters are made for at the most 250 volts. This is a 400 volt system. So even if it physically could work, these do not, aren't able to handle the amount of power a supercharger can deliver. Now, luckily, for safety reasons, it won't work. And that's because Tesla has an authentication process with their supercharger systems. When a vehicle gets plugged in, there's a communication process that goes between the vehicle and the charging station to make sure it's a Tesla vehicle and not another electric vehicle that somehow invented like an adapter that would allow you to charge. So the car talks to the charging station, the charging station says what kind of car you are, oh, I'm a Chevy Bolt EUV. Yeah, now nah, you're not charging here. Now, the good news is, even though today only Tesla vehicles can charge on Tesla superchargers, Tesla has said that they're gonna open up their supercharger network for other electric vehicles like this Chevy Bolt EUV here. However, we're not sure if that means they're gonna sell an adapter, they're gonna make a Tesla to CCS1 adapter that you would use, or if they're gonna start installing superchargers with CCS1 connectors attached to them. We just don't know yet. Here in the US, there are no Tesla supercharger stations that will charge other vehicles. In Europe, it's different because in Europe, they Tesla uses the CCS2 connector and they've already opened up some of their locations in Europe so that non-Tesla electric vehicles can charge there. But here in North America, the only way you can use a Tesla supercharger currently is if you own a Tesla. We're gonna keep an eye on this because as I said, Tesla promised they're gonna open it up for other EVs and we're gonna see if it's an adapter or if they're gonna use a CCS1 connector. Not sure yet, but as soon as we get clarity on that, I'm gonna report it here on State of Charge. But for now, unfortunately, Tesla can use non-Tesla DC fast chargers with the adapters we just showed, but non-Tesla electric vehicles cannot use Tesla superchargers. All right, so why do you think that Tesla is so adamant that you don't use a Tesla adapter and why some networks like EVgo feel the same way and they're trying to block the use of the non-official adapter from use on their network entirely? So it has to do with safety. So one thing I wanna take a close look at, this is the Tesla adapter. You notice it has this little pin here on the back and it's spring-loaded. When you 
put this into your Tesla. This little piece here presses against the car and it pushes into the inside of the adapter. When it does that, it locks the top of the CCS connector to the adapter. You can't press the button and unlock the connector to the adapter. And that's really important because without that, somebody can just unplug the adapter from the CCS connector hot while it's delivering 400 volts. Now you notice here, that's not the case with either the CTEC or Electron adapter or the EV hub adapter. There's nothing that locks these adapters to the CCS connector and they can just be yanked apart right in the middle of charging. And uh, as we talked about before, that's really not good. You don't want that to happen. So, you know, Tesla's thought about that and made sure that when the adapter is connected to a CCS1 connector and plugged into the car, that whole system, the adapter and the CCS connector are locked. They can't be broken unless charging stops and then the vehicle authorizes the connection to be released. So it's really a safety factor and I think that's just another reason why if you really want a Tesla CCS1 adapter, you gotta go for the guy that Tesla makes. It's, it's a better unit and it's much safer. And you know, when we're talking EV charging, you really have to put safety first. It's one of the reasons why I talk about when you do your home electric vehicle charging station installations, to always get a qualified installer to do that. And I know a lot of people like to do uh, at home, do, do it yourself, uh, you know, weekend installations. And I don't deter people from doing that. I'm a do it yourself for myself. I do a lot of stuff around my house here myself. But one of the things I don't want to do, and I recommend my followers don't do, is install their home electric vehicle charging equipment themselves. And it's because it draws a lot of power and it does it for many continuous hours. And most homeowners aren't aware of the latest electrical codes. They get updated every three years. We have a big update that's gonna get pushed through this year. And one of the changes is they're going to be in the code now. If you have a NEMA 1450 or a NEMA 650 outlet like I have back here, they have to be on a GFCI circuit. You need a GFCI circuit breaker. And one of the problems with that is all of these charging stations have built-in GFCI protection. And if you have the GFCI circuit breaker, you know, in the same circuit as a, something that has GFCI protection, you get what's called nuisance tripping. And that's gonna happen a lot to people that install NEMA 1450 outlets. Now you could either go against the code and be in violation to, of the NEC code, or you could deal with, with uh, nuisance tripping all the time. So I think we're going to be moving forward. We're gonna be recommending people hardwire their home electric vehicle charging equipment. In the past, I kind of said, well, it's up to you. If you wanna put in a plug, go right ahead. If you wanna hardwire your charging equipment, I think we're going to start recommending everybody hardwire their home charging equipment. Then you don't need GFCI breaker in your pound. You're gonna save some money on that also because they're expensive. The GFCI breakers that are like for 40 amps or 60 amps, you can save a little bit of money that way and you're not gonna have to deal with it. It's also a cleaner installation when you just have uh, the hardwired. You can put them right into the back of the unit so you don't see anything or if it comes out underneath, like with my uh, Tesla wall connector here, you just have a little piece of conduit above the wall and, and it goes in nice and cleanly. But you know, what you want to do is hire a professional uh, to do that. I mean, there's things like load calculations that they do on your house when you're installing charging equipment because it has a very high draw. For the most uh, times, uh, what your EV is drawing is going to be more than what the rest of your house is using. So it's important that you make sure that you're not overloading your existing service. And if you and if you are going to, you might need a service upgrade. So it's another reason why you want a professional to come out, do load calculation, pull a permit, do everything right once, and you don't have to end up paying for it later. It's part of the reason why that I've partnered with Qmerit. Qmerit is the largest installer of electric vehicle charging equipment in the US. And they don't just do EV charging equipment, they do all type of uh, service upgrades, home energy storage devices, solar, they install all your electrification needs. And you know, I, I thought long and hard about who to partner with for this channel, and I had uh, options to partner with 
quite a few different sponsors, but Qmerit was the perfect fit for me because I believe that what they're doing is good for the industry, standardizing EV installation, offering competitive prices. They have installers in all the different markets in the country across all the states, uh, unlike many of the other uh, installers that install EV charging equipment, and they offer free estimates. You can uh, go to the Qmerit website. I have a link to it in the description of this video. Click on that. Somebody will come out and give you a free estimate, and they'll explain what needs to be done in your house to install your EV charging equipment. All right, well, that's a wrap on our everything you need to know about Tesla adapters video. I hope you learned something here. I'm going to leave links to all of these adapters in the description of this video if you would like to purchase them. And I'd also like to let everybody know if I didn't answer your questions, please leave them in the comment section below. I do monitor the questions there and I try to answer as many of them as I can. If this is your first time here on State of Charge, please click that subscribe button and ring the notification bell. Should not miss any upcoming electric vehicle and electric vehicle charging content. And thanks for watching.